In Germany, the National Socialist Party used anti-Semitism to attain influence and power. How is anti-Semitism today being used to advance socialism throughout the world? Anti-Semitism is used to advance socialism, but uh, to advance radical Islam. And I could say that uh, radical Islam and socialism uh, goes together through the world right now. And you have to remember that the National Socialist Party in Germany was a socialist party. If you look at their program, it was a party uh, that was based on uh, the theory of Karl Marx. Uh, I used to say to my students in the past, uh, read the end of uh, the Communist Manifesto written by Karl Marx and read the program of the National Socialist uh, uh, Party and you will see that uh, they are almost the same. Uh, the Nazi, uh, Hitler, Goebbels just added a nationalist component and an anti-Semitic component. But uh, that's the main difference. For the rest everything is exactly the same. Uh, so you have to understand that if people reject uh, Israel, it's because Israel is a free capitalist country. If it was not like a free capitalist country, and it, if it was not a part of the West, they would not reject Israel. Uh, they reject Israel for that. And uh, I could say that uh, they reject Jews, because Jews are a, a supporter of a strong ethical values. Uh, all the values that are Western values are coming from Judaism and people who reject these values can only reject Judaism. So you have to see what is at stake in uh, the rising anti-Semitism in the world. It's mostly now an anti-Semitism coming from uh, leftist mm -hmm. and from Islamist. Uh -huh. Are the leftists using Israel to uh, garner uh, to uh, to uh, advance their influence in politics around the world? Uh, yes, exactly, exactly. That's what they are doing. And uh, they treat Israel as if it was a, a scapegoat uh, devil. And uh, because of them, Israel is completely vilified around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, when I speak about Israel, uh, I, I have the impression that people who speak to me in Europe, especially in Europe, but sometimes leftists here, mm -hmm. uh, that they speak about a country that I don't know, where I have never been. Mm -hmm. uh, because they, they think they, they seem to think that you have no Arabs in Israel. That's wrong. They seem to seem they they seem to think uh, that uh, it's impossible to practice Islam in Israel. That's wrong. It's a free country. They seem to think that uh, policemen are everywhere. That's wrong, etc., etc. The list could be very, very long. So Israel is completely vilified in uh, Europe and uh, more and more in the U.S. And I think that uh, it's a huge problem. People don't see that radical Islam is behind the vilification of Israel and that leftists are more and more supporters of radical Islam. I think that uh, they think that they can use radical Islam uh, to gain power uh, in the West. The left is doing that? Uh, yes, leftists are doing that. They use radical Islam mm -hmm. to gain power. But I think that um, radical Muslims think that they use a leftist to gain power. And I'm not sure that in the end leftists will win because leftists have only a political ideology and uh, Muslims, radical Muslims, have a religion behind them and a religion uh, that has 1 billion and 500 uh, million uh, adherents. So it makes a huge difference and I think that the leftists are playing a kind of uh, way out game and a very dangerous game, that, a game that is extremely dangerous not only for the Jews but for freedom in the rest of the world. How do you feel that the multiculturalists are, and including uh, liberals dedicated to diversity, uh, may be exploiting uh, Muslim immigration to an uh, anti-Semitic uh, dynamic, including the, the uh, Jews who are supporting diversity and multiculturalism. How is it detrimental to bring uh, more Muslims into the democratic West? 
Uh, I think that uh, they want to bring more and more Muslims and uh, they speak of multiculturalism, but either they don't understand what Islam is or they play, as I said, a very dangerous game. If uh, they understand what Islam is, uh, they play a dangerous game. If they don't understand, it means that they are completely blind and they don't see that Islam is not only a re religion. In a country you can have Jews, Buddhists, uh, Christians, uh, they accept each other. Uh, because in uh, these religions uh, you have a faith and you respect other people. In Islam you don't have to respect other people. I could say that uh, the basic principles of Islam contradict the principles of democracy and contradict the principles of the rule of law. Uh, the rule of law in a country like the United States, like Europe, uh, is a principle that, uh, that's supposed to support the equality of all the human beings. In Islam you cannot have equality. You don't have equality between men and women. You don't have equality uh, between foreigners and uh, members of uh, your country. And you don't have equality between Muslims and people who are not Muslims. People who are not Muslims are dimmi. Uh, they are inferior. They have to pay special taxes. They have to uh, wear special garments. And uh, so uh, you, you don't have equality in uh, Muslim countries and uh, you don't have equality in Islam in general. So uh, you cannot say multiculturalism because uh, Muslims and uh, Muslim culture and Islam uh, cannot tolerate for long uh, other religions and other cultures. You see that everywhere in the world. Uh, you can look at the Muslim country in the world. You will see no Muslim country where uh, Christians uh, are treated equally. Uh, Christians are killed in many of these countries. Almost all Jews have been expelled from Muslim countries. So it means something. People would have to watch the world as it is now in order to understand. If they don't watch the world, it means that they don't watch what is right in front of them. Mm -hmm. Is there even a risk of the Muslims who are already in the West? Uh, yes, if you look at what's happening in Europe, you see that uh, when polls are made, uh, a third, one third of the Muslims living in Europe would like to live under Sharia law. Just for them or for everyone? Uh, for everyone. Uh, they think that the Sharia has to be in it has to be the law for everybody. Uh, so, and it's normal. Uh, that's what the Quran says. The Quran says a Muslim law has to be above all, all other kind of laws. So some Muslims uh, don't agree with that, but uh, they can be uh, confronted by uh, other Muslims that will come and say to them, uh, read carefully the Quran. It says that Sharia has to be above the rest and uh, so if they want to be good Muslims they have to react that way. Uh -huh. But many people think that Muslims in the West will adopt uh, democratic practices but in France what percentage of the population is Muslim today? Uh, I could say that it's around 10 between 10 and 12 percent uh -huh. and uh, you can see that uh, Muslims don't integrate. In France right now you have 572 no-go zones uh, in zones where Muslims live together and uh, where uh, radical imams are the law more and more and the police has ordered to not go in and uh, because it would be risky it could create riots and uh, you could see too that uh, Islam is more and more visible in the streets. Uh, 20 years ago I remember many people in Europe said to, said to me uh, Muslim will integrate thanks to women uh, because women in Islam are not treated equally. They have to wear veils, they are inferior. And what are you seeing in Europe right now and in France especially? More and more women wearing veils, burqa, and uh, saying that women who don't wear veils and burqa uh, are not good women, uh, they are almost prostitutes. And uh, so, uh, if you see in Europe uh, uh, reactions against women who wear veils, uh, some people don't understand that in the US. It's not because uh, they are not tolerant, it's because they know that when you have many women starting to wear veils in uh, part 
of the city, it means that the other women are in danger because they will be considered as prostitutes mm -hmm. by these women mm -hmm. and by the men. And mm -hmm. so you can have rapes and uh, uh -huh. you have more and more rapes in many European cities and suburbs right now. Uh -huh. In Sweden? In Sweden, but not only in Sweden, even in Germany, uh, thanks to uh, the importation of many Muslims by Angela Merkel. And uh, you have that in Europe too, uh, in France, I would say. In France you have that too, uh, but uh, many f people in France don't speak about it. They don't speak about Muslim anti-Semitism that is rising in France. Uh, ten days before the uh, presidential election in France, a uh, Jewish woman was thrown out a window just because she she was a Jew. Mm -hmm. uh, thrown by, out by who? Uh, by a radical Muslim. And uh, now in France, radical Muslims are considered insane. So this man was taken away. Uh, he will never see a judge. He will never go to jail. Mm -hmm. He's an is now in in an insane asylum. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe maybe these people are insane, but mm -hmm. they are not only insane. They are also radical Muslims. <laughs> There are many uh, liberal groups who are promoting interfaith dialogue. Mm. In fact, uh, here on Holocaust Remembrance Day, there are interfaith uh, gatherings uh, in, in remembrance of the Holocaust where they bring uh, a Muslim leader from a mosque to come and speak uh, against the Holocaust, mm. for, for example. Um, but what's the situation like for Jews in countries with large Muslim populations? In a country like France, uh, maybe you have one imam that can do it. Uh, I know him very well and uh, I must say that uh, he cannot go in the street without 10 policemen around him protect because him. he to protect him because from he risks from from other Muslims. They say he is a very bad Muslim. Uh, so he could try to explain that he is practicing taqiyya, maybe it's what he is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, taqiyya is uh, the, 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 the fact of lying. A form of uh, deception? Yes, a form of deception in order to, to push people that you don't say the truth, but uh, that it's a way to take advantage of other people. Uh -huh. And so I could say that maybe some Muslims are sincere, but uh, what they say would be impossible to say in Muslim countries. In Muslim countries, if you say Islam is peace, uh, many Muslims will look at you and say you're insane. If you say um, Islam has to uh, accept Jewish people, have to accept Israel, etc., uh, people will start to... to, to to try to kill you, uh, so you can say that in the West, but you can you cannot say that in Muslim countries. Uh -huh. So I I I will be for multiculturalism when I will see that in Muslim country uh -huh. you can have freely synagogues, yeah. you can have freely churches, uh -huh. but right now that's not what I see uh, at all. But France is a Christian country. Why is it unsafe for Jews where Muslims are around? Uh, France is less and less Christian. If you look at churches, churches are more and more empty. Uh, even, and even as even secular France, uh, why is it dangerous for Jews among Muslims? Uh, because many French people are scared by Muslims. They are afraid to be killed. They are afraid to be mugged. Mm -hmm. And so if something bad happened to someone not far away from them, uh, just a few uh, a few inches from them, they say, I, I'm not concerned. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me. So they are, they are cowards. Uh, I must say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm sad to have to say it, but many people react with cowardice in what's happening. And so m more and more French people uh, say, I hear, the, I hear it in the streets, oh, if these Jews uh, didn't show that they, were, they are Jews, if they didn't support Israel, maybe we would have a more quiet society and maybe Muslims would leave us alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, Muslims want to kill Jews, but maybe it's the fault of Jews because they show that they are Jews, they have synagogues, and uh, some of them support Israel. So it's bad. Uh, if we want to have a quiet society, uh, we have to uh, accuse Jews uh, of being visible. If they are well, not visible, uh, it would be much better. Uh, and, and I hear people saying, uh, if my wife has to wear a veil, and if I'm not killed, uh, at least I will be safe. Uh, so uh, it's appeasement that it's worst. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there again 
uh, a repeat of the Jacuz um, Zola style of uh, discrimination against Jewish people in France today? Uh, no, no, not really right now, but uh, no, 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 because you have Jews in many, many positions, but uh, Jews are threatened, uh, Jews are killed uh, by radical Muslims. All the Jews that have been killed in France during the last uh, 20 years, I would say, mm -hmm. were killed by radical Muslims. Uh, but people don't want to speak about it. They don't want to say anything about it. And uh, as I said before, uh, the organization that are supposed to fight against anti-Semitism fight only against rightist anti-Semitism. It's more comfortable to do that than to fight against uh, Islam Islamic anti-Semitism, uh, because you know that uh, rightists uh, will not try to kill you if you accuse them. If you accuse uh, radical Muslims, they want to kill you. That's one of the reasons why I decided to leave France. Uh, I received many death threats. I was saying to my wife, uh, those who speak don't act and those who act don't speak. But uh, it was not enough for her and uh, I feel safer in a free country like the United States because I love the United States, uh, they are still a free country mm -hmm. and I want them to keep uh, their freedom. Mm -hmm. Do the organizations, the Jewish organizations who won't go after or, or criticize Muslim anti-Semitism, is it because, as it is in the U.S. with the uh, Anti-Defamation League, so many of their donors, their Jewish donors, are liberals who are afraid of being thought of or thinking of themselves as uh, racist or Islamophobes? Uh, I think that uh, it's the case in France, maybe less than in the United States, but uh, right, uh, you're right. It's uh, the same in France right it's now. Same, yeah. Yes, more and more the same. Yeah. Uh, why aren't more Jews in France who are in greater threat, in greater peril from the Muslims in their society, why aren't they moving more towards their own self-defense and self-interest towards uh, the conservative, more conservative politics and conservative activism? Uh, they try to do it, but if you look at uh, conservative parties, if you look at the moderate right in France, I could say that the moderate right in France uh, see that uh, many Muslims vote. So they want they want vote. If they look at the, the French Jewish community, they, they, they see that uh, it it's a small community. You have only 400,000 uh, Jews still living in France. You have you had much more in the past, but many Jews left France to go to the U.S., to Canada, or to Israel, and so you have less and less Jews. So it's it's okay uh, to, to to support Jews if you want uh, the Jewish vote, uh, but it's much less interesting than to get the Muslim vote because you have eight million Muslims in France, and uh, so it's a much larger vote. So many politicians belonging to the moderate right uh, will be ready uh, to uh, say nothing about uh, this topic because they want to get the Muslim vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you see the same dynamic being reflected in the United States Democratic Party with uh, Representative Keith Ellison assuming so much power and the, the party being pulled towards the far left? Mm. How do you see that, that playing out now for uh, historically Jewish uh, Democrats, mm. Democrat voters, and the party's policies towards uh, Palestinianism mm. and anti-Semitism. Uh, I could say that uh, the Democratic Party is not the party that it was 20 years ago. It's more and more a leftist party and uh, radical Muslims have more and more influence in the party right now and uh, I think that it's a big concern, a big problem and I think that uh, many Jews in the US would have to see it and to feel more and more uncomfortable uh, when they see uh, what's happening to the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party has become a, a leftist and pro-Islam party mm. and I think that 
it, uh, <laughs> I, I think that it's very dangerous for the future of the United States. And I think that uh, if you look at the programs and the platform of the parties uh, that was published a few months before the um, presidential election, mm -hmm. you could see that the Republican Party was the strong supporter of Israel and uh, that it was not the case with uh, the uh, Democratic Party. So there is an evolution. I understand that people wants the support of Israel and the fight against anti-Semitism to be bipartisan. Mm -hmm. But uh, I must say that if I look carefully at uh, what things are happen, mm -hmm. uh, what's happening, I see that it's not the case anymore. You, you can see that uh, the, the Democratic Party is becoming a different party. Mm -hmm. I hope that it will be possible to change things in the Democratic Party. I have nothing against Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, but I see the difference. It's not even the political party that it was at the time of Bill Clinton. And it's not at all the party that it was at the time of John Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Now you must be saying this uh, because you're a Jew and you're concerned, are you? No, I'm not a Jew. I'm just a human being concerned by human rights and uh, by the respect for human beings. And I think that uh, maybe I have a strong sensibility about it because I could see what did happen to the Jews in Europe 70 years ago. And uh, I take seriously the world never again. Uh, I support Israel because I know Israel. It's a free and democratic country and I, I have many uh, friends in Israel. And I see what's happening in Europe with leftists and with radical Muslims. Uh, so I say to Americans, be aware of what did happen to Europe. Europe was not like that 25, 30 years ago, and uh, the difference can come very, very fast. I used to work for the European Union as an expert, so I was going to Brussels very often. Uh, when I was going to Brussels uh, 25 years ago, uh, it was a European country. Now, if I go to Brussels, if I arrive at the station, I have the feeling that I'm not in a European city anymore. I feel that I'm in a radical Muslim city. So the change can come very, very fast. And I could say that I see the same happening in the suburbs of Paris and uh, of uh, all the main big cities in France.